Welcome back guys, Dragon's Dogma Part 2 just received a new update yesterday. Now the game supports DLSS frame generation officially. Unfortunately, FSR3 frame generation is still not available in this game. However, we can still use it in this game using a program called DLSS Enabler. In this video, I'll be showing you the complete process. The thing is, DLSS frame generation is limited to RTX 40 series GPUs only. But using DLSS Enabler, you will be able to use FSR frame generation on any GPU whether it's from Intel, Nvidia or AMD, it does not matter. However, this tutorial will be limited to RTX GPUs only as my PC has an RTX 2070 Super GPU and a Ryzen 5700X 3D CPU. There is only a small difference in installation instructions for this program on RTX GPUs and Intel and AMD GPUs. I will be covering this program on my ROG Ally that has an AMD based GPU. DLSS Enabler is made up of multiple mods. It's basically a program that installs and automatically configures these mods for us. Very handy tool. It's very simple to install the program. I haven't covered it before on my channel. I'll briefly explain it to you. You can download DLSS Enabler from Nexus Mods website. It's absolutely free. I'll give the link to this site in the description of the video. Need to have a free Nexus Mods account in order to download any stuff from here. Features of the program. FSR frame generation works with DirectX 12 games on Intel, AMD and Nvidia GPUs. Both GTX and RTX GPUs are supported. Compatible with most GPUs that support DirectX 12 API. Enables DLSS upscaler option simulating it through XCSS or FSR2 upscaler. This is done using OptiScaler mod which was previously known as Cyber XCSS. It's a part of DLSS enabler. This mod allows us to replace DLSS upscaler with XCSS or FSR2 upscaler useful for people who don't have an RTX based GPU as DLSS is limited to RTX GPUs. Activates the DLSS G frame generation option simulating it through FSR3. This is done using Nukem 9's DLSS G2 FSR3 mod. This mod is also a part of DLSS enabler. Now here's the interesting part. FSR frame generation even works on unsupported GPUs from AMD, Intel and Nvidia like the GTX GPUs. This is achieved using Nvidia GPU spoofers. These spoofers make the games think that they are running on an RTX based GPU. Compatible with both Windows 10 and 11. Even Linux is supported. This is how you can configure the program manually. It's not required for Dragon's Dogma Part 2. Quickly giving credits to the people involved with the project. First we have Nukem9 for providing DLSS G2 FSR3 mod. Then we have Nitec for providing the OptiScaler mod. Then we have Fake Macau for providing NV API Dummy DLL. It's an NVIDIA GPU spoofer. Then we have Nitec for providing DX12 Proxy, another NVIDIA GPU spoofer. Last but not least, many thanks to the community of DLSS2 FSR. Now I'll download the program. Scroll all the way up to the top. Just click on Files here. Then click on Manual Download under the latest version of the installer. Just click on Download here. This is the all-in-one package. Slow download. This is the file that I just downloaded, executed. DLSS enabler will install all the mods for us. Accept. Next, next. Now you need to specify the directory with the game's exe file is present. Select Dragon's Dogma Part 2 in your Steam library. Right click. Manage. Then click on Browse Local Files. This is the game's install directory. There is the game's exe file. Just click here, copy the directory. Paste it here. Should look like this. Then click on next. This is where the installation instructions differ between RTX GPUs and Intel and AMD GPUs. If you have an AMD or an Intel based GPU, you need to check this box, enable support for AMD and Intel GPUs. Like this, but since I have an RTX based GPU, I'll uncheck this box, not required. These files are also not required, optional registry files. I'll just select version.dll file, Nukem 9 mod. Click on next. Install. That's it, we are done can read the readme if you want. Edit the configuration form here, optional, not required for Dragon's Dogma part 2. Finish. That's it. All of the mods have been installed as you can see. Now if you want to remove all of the mods that you install via DLSS enabler, just execute its uninstall exe file. This file. 
Now make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is enabled. Otherwise, Nukem 9's mod will not work. Right click anywhere on the desktop, then click on display settings. Now click on graphics. Click on change default graphics setting. From here, make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is checked. Also make sure VRR is enabled. Of course, if your display supports VRR, enable vSync for the game from NVIDIA's control panel. And just click on program settings. Add the game's exe file. Scroll down to the end. From here, enable vSync. Apply. That's it. Now, in order to prevent the game from crashing, you need to delete the game shader cache file every time you launch the game. This shader cache file is present in the game's install directory. This is what it looks like, shader.cache2. Delete. There is one more thing you need to do. You need to disable GeForce Experience Overlay. Just press the Windows key. Type GeForce Experience. Now click on Settings. From here, make sure in-game overlay is disabled. We are ready to run the game. First, I'll run the game without frame generation. Shaders will get compiled at the startup. In-game settings, display mode set to full screen. Full HD resolution. My monitor supports up to 240Hz refresh rate. Frame rate unlocked. In-game vSync disabled. DLSS upscaler enabled. Using its quality preset. And now we have access to frame generation. Disabled it for the time being. If after enabling DLSS upscaler, the screen goes wide, just disable it and re-enable it again. Issue should be fixed. The screen is very demanding on the GPU. We'll be targeting 50 to 60 FPS. Ray tracing disabled. Mesh quality texture filtering and texture quality set to high for the textures 1 GB. Grass tree quality and resource intense. Effects quality set to low. Shadow quality set to high. Motion blur disabled. Estimated VRAM usage 5.59 GB. Yeah, there's my character. I'm at Vermont Outpost. Lot of non playable characters here. They can tank the performance. Just run around here. FPS is very variable 45 to. We're running low on everything. Skip the dialogues. Crafting materials. For, we've had a hard time. I sent Marcus to get. What say you? Could I trouble you to run? I uh, suppose I can't. On. Back to the game. And yes, frame generation is working. I can observe the added amount of smoothness. Best part is, no graphical artifacts. Game's HUD is not flickering. This is amazing guys. FPS increased up to 100. Just explore this. We'll be fighting against some goblins. Our pawns will assist us during combat. Can give certain commands to our pawns. Master, goblins. Give it to me. My pawns are violent. Here you go. Ran out of stamina. I can see some harpies. No sense I'll save that guy. Gain the upper hand. The early griffin gets the worm, as they say.
Oh no, I am under a sleep effect. These things are not in my reach. Impaled <laughs> it. Wake up my pawn. Waiting for the thing to come down. Finally. Not compares to the thrill of victory. Check out the scenery. Low on stamina. I'm almost there. Need to cross this bridge. There's the dragon. Yeah, here we're getting around 60 FPS. Performance is limited by the GPU. Charging towards it. This is a scripted event. Only will be the future dragon. Just a memory. Skip the cutscene. Now in the next settlement, even here FPS is around 90. So excellent performance using FSR 3 frame generation. That's it with the video guys. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.